night after night after night, we were told all these things and gimmicks were going to somehow push Harris over the line. And we were just ignoring the fundamentals. Inflation, people feeling like that they were barely able to tread water at best. That was the fundamentals of the election. Kamala Harris did not lose this election because she's a woman. She lost this election because there were American families sitting there telling her how they couldn't afford to put food in their fridge. And her solution was to bring out Meg the Stallion to twerk on stage alongside just about every single one of P. Diddy's friends to endorse her. She lost this election because there were Americans who lost everything in an absolutely horrific hurricane. And she sat there telling them that $750 should be enough for them if they even qualify while simultaneously funding illegal staying in five-star hotels in New York City receiving three meals a day provided to them by taxpayer dollars. They asked her, would she do anything different? And she said, not that I can think of. Mm. And when that happened, you just knew that she was in a world of trouble because Trump knows how to utilize those things to his advantage. One of the things that's going to be interesting to see is how they pivot because the game is over. The game is over. They threw everything at the wall. They tried to create a candidate out of thin air. This used to work for them. A Beyonce endorsement used to work for them. And it's no longer working. When you have your hope in a system that is always pivoting to the next thing that the world deems is, is right, then your hope will always be attached to that. Your hope will always be attached to your candidate or your political views as opposed to Jesus Christ, the firm foundation, the one who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right, y'all, this video has been going viral across social media. Scott Jennings does a flawless job taking down an entire panel of woke CNN hosts. I'm intrigued. Let's see what's going on. He's won the national popular vote uh, for the first time since, for a Republican, for the first time since 2004. Um, this is a big deal. Uh, this isn't backing into the office. This is a mandate to do what you said you were going to do. Get the economy working again for regular working class Americans. Fix immigration. Try to get crime under control. Try to reduce the chaos in the world. This, this is a mandate from the American people to do that. I think I'm interpreting the results tonight as the revenge of just the regular old working class American, the anonymous American who has been crushed, insulted, condescended to. They're not garbage. They're not Nazis. They're just regular people who get up and go to work every day and are trying to make a better life for their kids. And they feel like they have been told to just shut up when they have complained about the things that are hurting them in their own lives. I also feel like this election, as we sit here and pour over this tonight, is something of an indictment of the political information complex. Mm. I mean, we've been sitting around here for the last couple of weeks, and the story that was portrayed was not true. I mean, we were told Puerto Rico was going to change the election. Liz Cheney, Nikki Haley voters, women lying to their husbands. Before that, it was Tim Walls and the camo hats. Night after night after night, we were told all these things and gimmicks were going to somehow push Harris over the line. And we were just ignoring the fundamentals. Inflation, people feeling like that they were barely able to tread water at best. That was the fundamentals of the election. And so I think that both parties should always look at the results of an election and figure out what went right and what went wrong. But I think for all of us who cover elections and talk about elections and do this on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to figure out how to understand, talk to, and listen to the half of the country that rose up tonight and said, we've had enough. I think that was very well said. I mean, you even look at from the standpoint of Kamala's campaign, so much of it was ran off of gimmicks, just like he was saying. So much of it was based on um, Beyonce endorsement and Oprah endorsement and uh, Taylor Swift and Eminem and all these people, Meg Thee Stallion and Glorilla and Cardi B. It's like, bro, you can get all these people and you can pay them millions of dollars to come out to your rally and to quote unquote endorse you although you paid them to be there, you paid them and you gave them a script and you gave them a teleprompter, but nonetheless, you can get all these people, but that doesn't change the fact that there's real issues, that people are hurting, that people are struggling. And you're just trying to sweep that under the rug and blind us with the fact that these celebrities are on your side. 
Kamala Harris did not lose this election because she's a woman. She lost this election because there were American families sitting there telling her how they couldn't afford to put food in their fridge. And her solution was to bring out Meg Thee Stallion to twerk on stage alongside just about every single one of P. Diddy's friends to endorse her. She lost this election because there were Americans who lost everything in an absolutely horrific hurricane. And she sat there telling them that $750 should be enough for them if they even qualify while simultaneously funding illegal staying in five-star hotels in New York City, receiving three meals a day provided to them by taxpayer dollars. She lost this election because she sat there talking about how anti-racism she was while simultaneously blaming straight white men for just about every single problem this country has. Mm. Isn't it funny that if you demonize a group of people long enough for merely existing, they might not want to vote for you. American politics has changed forever. You will no longer be able to sit there and bully Americans into voting for you. It won't work. Unfortunately, our politicians on both sides seem to forget that they are actually public servants. They answer to the public, not the other way around. And they need to get behind that. They need to understand that. And they need to change and reform their policies to fit what the public is saying, or they will get left in the dust, as Kamala learned the hard way yesterday. Oof. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's see what Stephen A has to say. Prize, of course, wound up losing by a little bit in a lot of places and a lot of demographics. Why to you? Well, first of all, that's not how it looks to a lot of us. To you, somebody who is incredibly knowledgeable about this stuff, losing a little in a lot of different places. The way we look at it, we saw red all over the screen. Spanked. You need a band-aid, she, she got annihilated. That's how we look at it. When you look at some of the issues, uh, clearly not addressing the economy in a fashion that resonated. I know this much about minorities in this country. When it comes to black and brown folks in the United States of America, let me tell you something right now. We don't want to hear about percentages. We don't want to hear about, oh, inflation is dipped down to below 2% and all of that stuff. We're looking at the money in our pocket. How much does it cost to get gas? How much does it cost to buy groceries, to go out, eat dinner, et cetera, et cetera? How much money can we save? They asked her, would she do anything different? And she said, not that I can think of. Mm. And when that happened, you just knew that she was in a world of trouble because Trump knows how to utilize those things to his advantage. In the end, it's sad that she went out this way. You would have liked to have seen a more competitive race. Uh, but America has spoken and they have said they don't like what the left, particularly the progressives, on the fringes of the left have proposed to this country and what the Biden administration capitulated to. And that had her name written all over it as well. And that is why she will not be the 47th president of the United States. I have a question. Has she spoken yet? Has she said anything yet? I'm so like, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Has she said anything? I know she made a statement. Her team made a statement and they said that they had reached out to Trump and they spoke on the phone and that, you know, she's hoping for a peaceful transfer of power and stuff like that. Um, but has she spoken? Hold on. Let me see. Concession speech. Oh, she has. Hmm. Let me just watch a little bit of it. Let me watch a little bit of it. Let me watch a little bit of it. Let me see. 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 <laughs> Stop with this with the with the theme music, bro. It's killing me. Come on. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me say, and I love you back. And I love you back. Kamala, you supposed to hit him with the I love you back. Come on. So let me say, my heart is full today. My heart is full today. Full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me. Full of love for our country and full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for. But hear me when I say, hear me when I say, the light of America's promise will always burn bright. As long as we never give up and as long as we keep fighting. Yeah. To my beloved Doug and our family, I love you so very much. Oh 
talking about? I don't want to hear about Doug. Listen, we don't want to hear about Doug. The Walls family, I know your service to our nation will continue. And to my extraordinary team, to the volunteers. Come on, bro. We get it. Get to the meat. By love of country, with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. And we did it with the knowledge that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> but we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition. And that we will... Why were they booing for? ...engage in a peaceful transfer of power. A fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. And anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. Bro, she, she over there, she over there stirring it, bro. She's stirring up them, them spells. She's, she, she's sowing them seeds of division already. That's what I'm saying. You can't be acting like, oh, we want, we, we told them we're going to have a peaceful uh, transition. And then you're going to take little shots, little jabs. Like, just keep it all the way, keep it all the way cool. Either be one way or be the other way. If you still got smoke with Trump, which she still got smoke with Trump, it is what it is. It, 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 it just happened. It's still fresh. You can't expect her just to drop all that in an instant. But don't come on here and act like you're cool and then in the very next breath, Start shooting shots. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but, but to, to God, but to God, but to God. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Constitution of the United States. <laughs> and law. <laughs> I feel. I, yeah, listen, I get it. I understand. I understand. I understand. She's a politician. I get it. She's a politician. I get it. I get it. I get it. Guilty to our conscience and to our God. Oh, thank you. But who's God? Kamala, who's God? My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. Mm. The fight... The fight for freedom, for opportunity, for fairness, and the dignity of all people. A fight for the ideals at the heart of our nation. The ideals that reflect America at our... Okay. I didn't really want to watch the full thing. I just wanted to see if she had spoken, and she had spoken. So, um, yeah. Where was I gonna go? I seen there was a video I wanted to watch real quick. Oh, 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 oh. Where's my camera? He was not the solution. He okay, was, he was it's, not it's, the solution. I will just note that I will just note that it is probably not the best idea that Democrats orchestrated a very public stab fest, a proverbial stabbing in the front of the sitting president of the United States of America, and then didn't use him in his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania. I will defer so, to Mr. Lamar. So, that is true. Wait, did they win Scranton? Who won? Hold on. Who wins? Who won Scranton though? Oh, she barely won. She barely won. Wait. It says she got 58, so she got 50% of the vote, 58,000 votes. He got, uh, Trump got 55,000 votes, 48%. Barely won. Wow. That is actually really crazy. I think, Bi this is crazy. Would Biden have done better overall from an election standpoint? 
I kind of feel like he would have. I kind of feel like he would have. Did I play this clip yet from Candace? But I want to say this, like, quite seriously. Four years ago, in 2020, I had no kids. It's an incredible thing to think about. I had zero children, and now I have three children. And I'm so serious when I say that I was so concerned about Kamala winning that my husband and I were having serious discussions about what will happen, what can we do, what is our option. And I know that we're not the only family that truly thought about where will we go if, if America turns into a communist country. That's a very scary realization that we got this close that that would even be a concern and a conversation that you're looking at a map of the world and thinking like, are we going to be one of the ones that can get out? It's very scary, you know, and, and that's where we were at. And for the first time, that feels like in a long time, so many families across America are going to be able to sleep soundly tonight, knowing that they don't have to have that fear for the next four years. It's incredible. It really is an incredible evening. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that's going to be interesting to see is how they pivot, because the game is over. The game is over. They threw everything at the wall. They tried to create a candidate out of thin air. This used to work for them. A Beyonce endorsement used to work for them, and it's no longer working. And I think one of the most incredible stories is going to be black America, and I have to tell you how good I feel about that, because when I said it years ago that we were going to black it, that people could do this, and I'm not kidding, people at that time that were in the Trump campaign that are in it now, nearly laughed me out of the room with Charlie Kirk. They said it's not, even, it's not even a thought that black men and women wouldn't vote for, you know, that we'll turn away from the Democratic Party. And for the first time, we are seeing tonight that black Americans are done with the plantation narrative. So here, it's here. an astounding night all around. Be here, excited, here. be happy. I'm just, I'm thrilled. I'm over the moon about all of this. There's a fame. You know, I'm not the typical uh, political commentator. Because the most important thing to me is Jesus Christ. So like when she says there's a lot of people who are going to be sleeping well tonight, on the flip side of that, there's also a lot of people who are not going to be sleeping well tonight. There's also a lot of people who have lost all hope. There's also a lot of people who are looking to do exactly what she was saying in terms of going to a different country because they feel like that there's no hope here for them anymore, which is actually heartbreaking because so many people have their hope and their faith in a system that is changing, that is not rooted in a firm foundation. And when you, have, when you have your hope in a system that is always pivoting to the next thing that the world deems is, is right, then your hope will always be attached to that. Your hope will always be attached to your candidate or your political views, as opposed to Jesus Christ, the firm foundation, the one who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so it's like, you know, I hear what she's saying, but at the same time, man, how can we use this time to try to have the tough conversations with people who we disagree with in order to point them to Jesus Christ? And I'm not stupid. I understand that we will always be in conflict with one another. There will never be absolute peace until Jesus returns. I'm not stupid, but we still have a call to go out into the world and preach the gospel to everybody, regardless of political views or beliefs, to every person, regardless if we agree with them or not, preach the gospel because God's will is not for us to go to hell. That's not God's will. He wants everybody to repent. He doesn't want anybody to perish. And I think we should take that same heart. Especially right now when there's so much division. But obviously, you know, not everybody has the same beliefs or viewpoint that I do. So it is what it is. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments like this video. I'm out, y'all.